copies of magazines, copies of different plans, copies of stories having to do with many, many subjects. And what was said was absolutely fine and very, very perfectly. We did nothing wrong. This is a whole hoax. We had a lot of papers, a lot of papers stacked up. In fact, you could hear the rustle of the paper. And nobody said I did anything wrong other than the fake news, which, of course, is Fox, too. Uh, Mr. Trump, uh, Donald John Trump, responding to the latest follow up on the tape that was leaked to CNN by God knows who. Jack Smith, anybody? Maybe. Sure. Yeah, it is the Chris Plant show. Michael Pelka sitting in for my friend Chris Plant, who's cruising, cruising on the listener cruise, having a great time. Uh, Donald Trump yesterday in New Hampshire. So was uh, Governor DeSantis, Nikki Haley. It was a whole basket of candidates hoping to score GOP primary support. We'll see what happens. It's still Donald Trump's to lose, it looks like. He's got a commanding lead. But he's out there trying to explain what happened. Now, an audio tape doesn't tell the full story. That's why a picture tells a thousand words. But uh, Mr. Trump is claiming that I did nothing wrong. No one had said anything about this. This was a couple of years ago. Why didn't it come up now? We also learned that that recording, that recording, that incident was not part of the charges that have been uh, filed against Mr. Trump. None of that. None of that. Catherine Herridge was talking about it last night on CBS News. And I'm sitting there going, wait a minute. CBS News is covering this from this angle? So if this document or this moment with these documents was not part of the indictments, why was this delivered to CNN? Why did this come out like this? You have to wonder. It, it just doesn't make sense that that happened. It is certainly a curious placement of things. Very curious. And uh, I'm just happy there is, is coverage happening, at least on, even on CNN's, on CBS News's part. CNN is the one who is the beneficiary of this. Uh, I still don't know if there's been a poll way, people weighing in on whether it's true or not. But there are a lot of questions yet to be answered. And the Biden administration, by the way, is pivoting, pivoting away from whatever issues they can to focus on uh, their new branding now. They're, they've kind of gotten off the, the radical MAGA supporters. You know, they, they tested that for a while, and you heard it from Everybody in the mainstream media, you heard it from the president, you heard it from the press secretary, talking about those MAGA Republicans. Yeah, I, I guess they figured it out that that's not working. So now they're trying to sell us on the idea that you're better off now. That because of Joseph Robinette Biden Jr., you're in a better place. Did you, did you know that? Did you understand that you were in a better place? And it's not cringe. It started yesterday in the press briefing. Cringe wasn't there. We had uh, the backup to cringe. You know, her, her stunt double, not really looks like her, but Biden spokeswoman, uh, Olivia Dalton. I, excuse me, I should have said spokesperson. I know that's not right. Uh, spokesperson, Olivia Dalton was there instead of cringe. And she picked right up where all the cringe stuff happened. And she started talking about Bidenomics and how that's what we all need to focus on is Bidenomics. And that we, we need to pay attention because Bidenomics is working according to them. Then why is my grocery bill up at least 20% over what it was last year, even though the price of eggs has come down because the, the flocks have returned? And she was actually asked, at what point are the American people going to see the, uh, the results of Bidenomics? Or are, are we just not paying attention here? The version of what you just said has been said by this White House, though, most of the year. So at what point does, are the American people going to see this, or are they just not paying attention to what's being done? Are they not being patient enough? Look, I think... The pe people all across the United States of America are starting to see shovels and grounds in their communities. They're seeing the president announce, as he did on Monday, a commitment to connecting the entire country through broad, high-quality, affordable broadband uh, 
uh, access, which is going to make a difference in the lives of millions of people. And so, uh, you know, as we get farther into implementation, people are going to continue to feel that, they're going to continue to see, see that, and they're going to continue to hear from this president about uh, how we're going to continue to make progress for them. So progress, uh, we're, we're going to have better internets. You're going you're gonna to spend my tax dollars to build internets when we have companies doing that already. Hmm. Going to spend billions on this. But uh, apparently, according to Olivia Dalton, Biden's spokesperson, uh, Joe is really focused on uh, talking to the American people about how his plans are making a meaningful impact in their lives. Well, today we're focused on tomorrow and laying out Bidenomics and and talking to the American people about uh, what that is, how it's taken shape and how it's made a meaningful impact in their lives. Now, meaningful could be positive or negative. I'm just saying meaningful. Housing prices are up. Energy prices are up. Gas prices are up. Food prices are way up. Meaningful impact negatively meaningful impact but they're dug in on this bidenomics they want to brand it and that's good brandon should be branded with bidenomics um that's what we're focused on for the the moment i don't have anything to preview for you in the way of future economic announcements but um look we believe there's really substantial progress to be proud of here i'd like to see it i'd like to see substantial progress um somebody had the courage to ask how uh bidenomics is not uh really uh, a bad thing, you know, because we've got this high inflation, unemployment, etc. How is Bidenomics not an era of high inflation and rising unemployment rate? Well, take a look at where we started and where we are now. I would be happy to show you where you started and where we are now. Yeah, let's just go with gasoline right there. You're $1.10, a gallon more right now than when you took over. And... The average American worker has been having a net negative loss of income for 19 consecutive months, 19 consecutive months under Joe Biden, that inflation has taken away more of the money, the hard earned money from Americans than they have been able to earn. Inflation. Now, maybe Joey's really not up to the task And somebody wanted to know, you know, because President Obama at one time told Joe ahead of his run back in 2020, Joe, you don't have to do this. And they had lunch yesterday, but the press wasn't allowed in. So was was President Obama there to tell Joe maybe it's time? Maybe it's time to step aside, Joe. Maybe it's time you, you can retire now that we got you. Maybe Olivia Dalton knows. At the lunch, uh, President Obama reportedly told President Biden ahead of 2020, quote, you don't have to do this, Joe. You really don't. Uh, can you say if a similar message was shared today? I can't, and I don't know what you're referring to. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. She can't? She just said she can't. She can't answer if there was a similar message that was shared today. Okay, I get that if it was a private lunch. But to say I don't know what you're referring to? Were you in high school when this happened? I don't think so. It's just a couple of years ago. This is Olivia Dalton, spokesperson for the president of the United States. Everybody knew that that Obama came to Biden and said, look, Joe, you, you don't have to do this, buddy. We got some people waiting in the wings. She, she reaffirmed that she's ignorant on this. Regarding whether he should continue to serve in public life. I, I, I don't know what you're referring to, and I don't have any comment on it. I don't know what you're referring to. Cacistocracy. A cacistocracy government by the worst possible individuals. That's what's on display here. Um, She was also asked, she, Biden spokesperson Olivia Dalton, was also asked about um, the White House believing Attorney General committed perjury. Attorney General Merrick Garland committed perjury when he testified under oath that the, the Delaware U.S. Attorney David Weiss could bring charges outside of the district. And guess what her answer was? Guess, close your eyes. Guess the answer. Does the White House believe Attorney General Garland committed uh, perjury when he testified under oath that Delaware U.S. Attorney David Weiss could bring charges outside of his district? 
I don't have any comment on this. Anita, uh, go ahead. Ten days Steven, of, I'm uh, moving on. Anita? Steven, I'm moving on. I guess that's in the playbook. When Cringe left, she said, she said listen, if somebody keeps pressing, you, you just got to move on. You can't stick with it because they'll trap you with the truth. And you can't allow that to happen. You can't have the truth coming out. That would be, that would be wrong. That would be a disaster if somebody told the truth in these meetings and actually commented on it. Now, that claim, that claim that uh, Merrick Garland lied under oath, and that is kind of connected now to a New York Times story, which has independently confirmed one of uh, whistleblower Gary Shapley's key claims. He's the Internal Revenue Service whistleblower who alleges that um, there's been a lot of bad behavior here. As the, He was the lead official on the Biden case. And he, he testified that U.S. Attorney David Weiss, who led the DOJ prosecution, in this case, was completely rebuffed, pushed back by federal prosecutor, prosecutors in D.C. and L.A. when he requested that Hunter be charged for tax crimes that were committed in 2014 and 2015 in those jurisdictions. So here's the lead official, the lead investigator, the prosecutor who's on this case, who says he went to Washington, D.C. and to L.A. and requested that Hunter Biden face face some serious criminal charges for tax crimes that were committed in those jurisdictions. Hmm. We've been told that Merrick Garland said well, there, there were no restrictions. No restrictions at all. The New York Times has printed a story on this that says, in mid-2022, Weiss reached out to top federal prosecutor in Washington, Matthew Graves, to ask his office to pursue charges and was rebuffed. That's according to Shapley's testimony. A similar request to the Central District of California, includes L.A., was also rejected, Shapley testified. A second IRS official who has not been identified told the House Republicans the same story. That episode was confirmed independently to the New York Times by a person with knowledge of the situation. Wait a minute. Did journalism just happen at the New York Times? Did the New York Times just confirm what, what we've been hearing now all along from the whistleblowers? This is a major, major shift. This is a very major shift. And I, I'm just going to take a side trip here, but it relates to the New York Times because the New York Times also, also on the same day, accidentally shows that sex changes are dangerous, that what we're doing to kids, the mutilation of, of children and using the suppression drugs for puberty and the actual mutilation, they're not effective treatments for gender dysphoria. The Journal of American Medical Association, JAMA, published something on Tuesday that found that trans people in Denmark had a 7.7 .7 times rate of suicide attempts and 3.5 times rate of suicide deaths than the non-trans population. That's kind of a big number. It's not 7% higher. It's 7.7 .7 times higher. It's not 3.5% higher. It's three and a half times higher. The study, which has now concluded by analyzing the health records of more than 6 million people over the span of four decades, dealt with people who are 15 and over. That's kind of proof that what's called gender-affirming care doesn't care at all about these people. And maybe that's why we're seeing places like Sweden and Denmark putting a full stop on the brake pad, brake pedal when it comes to the gender reassignment surgeries, the puberty blockers. Journalism happening at the New York Times when it comes to the gender madness and when it comes to the Hunter Biden madness, maybe things are starting to shift. They need to shift quicker. It's Michael Pelka in for Chris Plant on The Chris Plant Show. Hey, Chris here with some exciting news. Now you can listen to me live on the WMAL app. 
Doesn't matter if you're in your car, in the office, on the go. The WMAL app delivers crystal clear around-the-clock news coverage anywhere with cell service or Wi-Fi. So don't miss a second of your favorite shows. Download the WMAL app today on the Apple App Store or at Google Play Store. It is the Chris Plant Show. My name is Michael Pelka, sitting in for my friend Chris Plant. He is uh, on holiday on a cruise with a bunch of lucky listeners. How much fun is that? It's great stuff. Uh, we were just connecting the dots. That's one of the things I like to do is to connect the dots on stories. And uh, seeing the, the New York Times start covering stories that they normally would not. They would normally say, before you publish a story that tells the actual truth, Make sure we go to the the leftist playbook and see if it meets the overall agenda going forward. And if it's about something that makes Hunter Biden or Joe Biden or the Biden crime family look bad, it's not going to get much play. And if it if it's it's somehow bringing logic and facts and medical common sense to the uh, the mutilation plan of the trans fans. Uh, no, we're not going to cover that. But they covered it on two occasions on one day. And yet at the same time, as I'm doing a very non-scientific monitoring of CNN since six o'clock this morning, they have not covered anything to do with Hunter Biden. Nothing. Nothing at all. There was that one brief moment when someone at CNN asked a question and it uh, was pushed aside. Joe said, no, no, I've never... Never talked with him about his. I have no idea about that. I, I can't even tell you I was at the house. So it, it is a rare moment. You should circle this date, the 28th of February. By the way, Elon Musk's birthday, my brother Frank's birthday, Kathy Bates's birthday, a lot of famous folks born, on, and Mel Brooks, the great Mel Brooks, born on this day 4,000 years ago. But uh, yeah, it's a, a very important date. When you start seeing actual news covered by the mainstream media who almost never covers the news. Never. Now, uh, around the corner, last half hour of the show, I do have a couple things. Yesterday, we talked briefly about this new line of drugs that is meant to help people with type 2 diabetes. Discovered to have a great benefit to people trying to lose weight. And I, I promised you yesterday I was going to reach out to a doctor friend of mine who's at the Cleveland Clinic and, and looks into research and see if these new drugs, these now weight loss drugs, which were originally said to be type 2 diabetes drugs, uh, do they have a long-term issue? Are there any serious problems? Because there are reports of something called Ozempic butt, where your butt goes flat, Ozempic face, Ozempic finger, where you lose so much weight you have to get your jewelry rebuilt. Uh, we'll get that clip, plus Kamala Harris has said a bunch of really, really dumb stuff. I know, I know you're saying, not, not surprising. And um, there's a, a musical controversy. Michael Piercy and I were talking about uh, this group, Fallout Boy, put out a new version of We Didn't Start the Fire, the great Billy Joel song. It's offensive to me, only because it's Fallout Boy. But there's another song that topped the pop charts last week that shows great promise for those of us who are conservatives. Have you heard 81 million votes, my ass? We'll play a little bit of that, too. Opelka, in for Plant on The Chris Plant Show. It is the Chris Plant Show. My name is Michael Pelka. Happy to be here. Thrilled to be here. Honored to be here sitting in for Chris Plant. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you to so many who've reached out on social media, Facebook, Instagram, or the Twitters. We try to stay active on all of those. I will get to the Kamala clips, the Kamala clips. It's hard not to say Kamala, isn't it? Because it's just a weird name. The Kamala clips joe can't even say it. It, it he hired her three years ago for gosh sakes uh kamala's out there being pushed and some people say they're once again attempting to rehabilitate her horrible image she's now the lowest rated vice president in the history of nbc asking those questions uh even after dick cheney shot a guy in the face he's still rated higher 
So it is kind of amazing. But they're trying to rehabilitate her image, and we'll get to that. I also promised you uh, a, a little bit of uh, musical fun, because who doesn't need a little bit of musical fun? And um, we're still looking to see. There's a bolo out for Mayor Pete. Mayor Pete. Nobody's seen Mayor Pete, it seems. And this especially during Pride Month, which you'd think that during Pride Month he'd be front and center. But then again, this administration hasn't exactly had a whole lot of success with all of its um, box-checking hires. You know, Sam Brinton now going to have to face at least two trials for stealing the luggage and the dresses and the stuff like that. And uh, Mayor Pete not showing up this entire month. Where the heck is he? And then there's that uh, Health and Human Services Assistant Secretary who got promoted to Admiral when uh, now we're hearing that, that gender-affirming care is, is not good. The stats that came out of the, uh, the huge study showing that seven and a half times more likely to commit suicide, those folks who are given this gender-affirming care, meaning mutilation and or puberty blockers, Instead of just mental health health. And now they're desperate and many of them committing suicide. What a tragedy. While while uh, Admiral Levine is telling everyone, no, that's that's really compassion. That's care. No, Sweden is pulled out of this. Denmark's pulling out of it. And I, I guess I really need to continue this discussion by giving you the little musical amuse bouche that we have when we talk about these transgender stories. Perhaps you remember the original. Jenny, don't change your gender. Please don't be a guy. Jenny, don't change your gender. LGBTQ plus 2 I A. 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 Yes, with just a few days left in Pride Month, we will be covering some of the stories relating to Pride Month and some of the things that are being foisted upon our children. And I think one of the the most terrifying things being foisted upon children is not the, the gender stuff so much, is that the left wants to separate us. They want to form divisions between groups left and right. And they do this by teaching kids to be violent, which I guess kind of makes sense. You know, Chris is always talking about the left being the violent ones. You look at some of the assassination attempts and and what their political background was. And as recently as James Hodgkinson going after the Republicans practicing for the congressional baseball game, tried to kill everybody. And he was a Bernie Sanders supporter. So he had socialism as well as has his Dem credentials in there. But over the weekend, at one of the big Pride events in uh, Seattle. Yeah, Seattle. You, you don't expect anything conservative to come out of Seattle, do you? Uh, adults were encouraging children at a Pride event to throw bricks at pictures of Republicans. I wish I were kidding. There's video of it, this out there. Ted Cruz posted it. It doesn't make any sense to really play it for you because it's all audio, uh, the visuals are the big thing. They put up a brick wall and put up pictures of Donald Trump, Governor Ron DeSantis, Ted Cruz, and others, and then had children throw foam bricks at them to teach children that it's not about having a discussion. It's about violence. It's about throwing bricks at your enemies. These people, as Chris likes to say, truly are crazy. They're nuts, and they're violent. And I have to get into the Kamala stuff because I don't want to run out of time with Kamala Harris. I've mentioned that I do believe Joe Biden is not going to become the candidate. I know a lot of people are saying, no, there's there's so much convention here at stake, and and they're not going to shift this late in the game. Well, it's uh, 495 days until the next election. 495 days. That's a long time. You can replace a candidate. It can be done. And if Joe Biden keeps falling off the mental cliff that he's been stumbling near, it it could happen easily. 
And there are choices out there. I, I mentioned to Michael Piercy during the break. I have a friend who's connected to politics in New Jersey who thinks the governor of New Jersey is kind of making noises that he might want to step up if there were a job opening, you know, if there were something there that was available, just in case you needed someone to fill the gap. And, of course, you have Gavin Newsom, who's already been to the White House while Joe was out of town and measured the drapes and looked at the Oval Office to see what he would do with his color scheme. And Newsom is out there. He's out on the road. If he doesn't sound like a political candidate, I I don't know what a political candidate sounds like. Going on the road to take the fight to states where freedom is most under attack. So I'm here in Montgomery, Alabama. We have a lot of work to do to build a movement to counter what's happening in red states across this country. I'm here in Sarasota, Florida at New College, and we're here just to remind everybody of what's happening in Florida and other states like it. Hmm. So we got Newsom, who's got the telegenic thing working for him. He definitely could be a candidate. And you've got the governor of uh, New Jersey, And you might even have governors from a couple other Democrat states who think they're capable. But the one that a lot of people keep pointing to is Kamala Harris, because she's the vice president, right? She's been training for the last two and a half years, just kind of understudying, because, you know, that's the role you have as VP. You go to funerals for foreign dignitaries, and then you're ready in case, God forbid, something happens to the president, you immediately are elevated to the presidency. And so they have tried repeatedly to rehabilitate the image of Kamala Harris, who we now know has the lowest rating of any vice president since NBC has been asking people to rate vice presidents. And she is a, uh, a cackling nincompoop, right? I, I, think, um, I think that's the term that is always uh, slapped on her. There's an Australian news anchor who loves to profile Kamala Harris. She does it pretty much every week and she loves to introduce her like this. The cackling nincompoop who is a heartbeat (laughs) away from the presidency. The comprehensively incapable Kamala Harris. Yes, comprehensively incapable. And uh, she was in New York City because there, there were a bunch of pride events going on in New York City. One of them outside of Stonewall. It was the anniversary of the Stonewall riots years ago. When, when it was uh, tougher on people who, who were uh, discriminated against for who they love. And we don't care who you love. We don't care. As long as you're not forcing it on everybody else. Just love who you love. And don't force it on us. But Kamala was out in front of Stonewall at the big Pride event. And she was there with Andy Cohen. Andy Cohen, who apparently... Uh, has taken over the mantle of the leader of the LGBTQ population of America. Uh, You know him from all those shows on Bravo, all those housewives shows that I'm constantly deleting from the DVR at our house. Uh, Did I say that out loud? Honey, you're not listening, are you? Um, And we got proof that Andy Cohen and Kamala Harris are competing for the lowest spot on the dumb pyramid. Are you up to date on Vanderpump Rules, first of all? I don't think so. Okay, I don't think so. I think you need to be. I'm going to tell you what you need to know. Now, secondly, I'm going to tell you the banger of the summer, okay? okay. That you need to play for your people, and they're going to love it. Everybody's going to go crazy. I like it. Yes, like this it. is the song of the summer, okay? So you need to tell the DJ to have that going, okay? okay? okay. All right. Ready to see Stonewall? Yes, I'm very excited. So Kamala and Andy Cohen outside of Stonewall talk. He's asking her if she's up to date on Vanderpump Rules. That's another program that gets regularly eliminated from the DVR. I don't know how it gets there. Uh, But then he gives her the banger of the summer. I guess that's what the cool kids are calling the new hot song of the summer. And the two of them in their gray suits, did they call each other and plan to wear gray suits? Hmm. Kamala and Andy Cohen then were talking about campaigning in gay bars in San Francisco and looking people in the eyes in back rooms. It, it was a little bizarre to me. Yeah. yeah. Bar calls really? And then people would say, well, you can do it over here, but then don't go to that back room. 
Mm-hmm. Why? There are voters back there. No. I've never they are voters. people so hard in their yeah. eyes. <laughs> yes, smart. <laughs> Yeah, she want to look at people in their eyes, but don't go in the back rooms. What's going on in the back rooms? Is that like the champagne rooms where Hunter Biden used to go, where he maybe met the mother of his daughter that he doesn't recognize? Just wondering. Kamala got rid of Andy Cohen. I guess he's like gum on your shoe on a hot day if there are cameras around. Uh, Without him talking about Stonewall and all those evil, evil bills out there. Like, don't say gay, and, and she's promising that something must be done. I also understand not only what we should celebrate in terms of those fighters who fought for fundamental freedoms, but understanding that this fight is not over. When I look at the fact that in our country we're looking at uh, somewhere around 600 bills being proposed or passed, anti-LGBTQ bills. A book ban, a, a, a policy approach that is don't say gay. People in fear for their life. People afraid to be, to be. These are fundamental issues that point to the need for us to all be vigilant, to stand together. I feel so very strongly. No one should be made to fight alone. And so when it comes to the work I have done for decades now, um, it is the work that I will continue to do. Um, I, I don't care much about what Kamala Harris says. And I think I would care even less if I could hear it and understand it. And her comms person should be fired for putting her out on a New York City street where sirens were going by if she's trying to get a message out to the media. Later, they did put her in front of Kiki Palmer on her podcast. And uh, they were talking about some really important things with Kiki Palmer. And uh, this is cut six, Michael. Kiki Palmer got right down to the nitty gritty on things and wanted to know how Kamala felt about maybe having her own line of Converse sneakers. Will we ever get a Madam VP Converse line? Oh, that's interesting. I do love my Converse. I mean, you wear them well. I have all kinds of different colors (laughs) and high top and low top. I prefer the low top. If I did... I'd probably want like a, like a freedom line, you know, right? Yes. Can you see that? Where Absolutely. It would be some freedom would be on on the converse, mm. you know, freedom, freedom to be, Absolutely. freedom to. I am free. Right, right. I am free. Free to march. Free to 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 walk Madam- my talk. It is just um, an insult to intelligent voters in the Democratic Party to think that she could possibly be president, and it should scare everybody. I don't understand why the Biden administration is trying to rehabilitate her. She is hopeless, in my opinion. And maybe that's why Gavin Newsom's out there, because he knows that the the general population, now he has confirmation from the NBC survey, the NBC polling, the worst ratings of any vice president ever since they've been doing this. But Newsom keeps saying he's he's not going to run for president. He keeps denying it because it's not my ambition. It's not the direction that I'm leaning into. Uh, It's not the moment. So one way to answer that question is I will never run for president of the United States. Can you say that? Yeah, I'm not. I have no interest. Under any circumstances, would you get in this primary? No. Hmm. I think those are uh, three lies all on the same topic. Under no circumstances. All right, I'm taking a quick break. When we get back, we'll wrap up today. And yeah, I'll give you a little snippet of uh, the number one hit song, 81 Million Votes My Ass, from the Truth Bombers, with a little Carrie Lake thrown in there. It's Michael Pelkin for Chris Plant on The Chris Plant Show. Chris Plant Show, wrapping up the Wednesday Wednesday program. Thank you for being here. Michael Pelka is my name. God willing, I will be back tomorrow as Chris enjoys the cruise, and then he'll return after the July 4th holiday. We didn't get to Dr. Royzen and explaining Ozempic, but I'll try and squeeze it in here. Maybe maybe if I don't, I'll I'll do it tomorrow. Uh, Ozempic and all of these new weight loss drugs that are meant to help people with type 2 diabetes. And there's also a crazy story out of uh, 
Trader Joe's store said, I, I have to do some research on, I don't know if I believe this story, that Trader Joe's has some kind of crazy employee hookup culture. Not the Trader Joe's employees that are in my store. I'm just saying, I can't even imagine that's going on. It's like they're, they're in one of Hunter Biden's sex clubs that he joined. It's really bizarro. We'll dive into that tomorrow. But I also have teased that there, there's a resurgence of culture coming to conservative performers. And the conservative performers who are putting out great product are seeing successes. There actually are cases right now where we're seeing songs with a conservative bent to them hitting the top of the charts. There were a couple that happened, kind of hip hoppy songs, talking about Target. I got a Target on my back. That one went to number one a couple weeks ago. And last week, this hit number one on the iTunes charts and also crossed over to the Billboard charts. Think about that. It is um, from a group called the Truth Bombers featuring a guest appearance by Carrie Lake. I'll give you a little bit of it. As I said, it hit number one. The song, 81 million votes, my ass. If you would have told me two years ago, three years ago, that I would be in the middle of a political movement, I would have said, put down Hunter's crack pipe. Right now. Right now. I can't afford the groceries. I can't afford your gas. It's bad flesh across the nation. 81 million votes, my ass. And it goes on for three minutes, and you know the theme. Hunter's in there. It's all in there. And if you're so inclined, you can find it on iTunes. I think it's a pretty funny song. And I'm also encouraged that it hit number one. Uh, Before I get out of here today, I have to explain something. Uh, Some of you have written and said, hey, Mike, at the end of the show every day, you always say testudo, my friends, testudo. I do. I try and close every program with that word, testudo. And it refers to an old Roman war maneuver when the, the soldiers used to see a barrage of spears and arrows coming their way, they would yell testudo or form testudo. And that meant they would all get together as a cluster and put their shields around each other and over their heads and create an impenetrable shell, just like a tortoise. And that's why we do that. That's why we talk about it, because in, in the... In the very near future, as we count down from 495 days to the next election, we're going to be under attack. Conservatives are going to be under attack from every single angle. Don't think that any minor victory is going to push us to the front and the left is going to give up. They don't give up. They have numbers. And we just have to have a stronger spine. And we have to have a resolve. And that's why at the the end of every single program, especially this one when I fill in for my friend Chris Plant all across the country. I remind you all, testudo, my friends, testudo. (laughs) 